for Aaron. Yes, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Shelf with Seki and Knickknack. You're imagining I'm going to have too much energy on this. Look, look. Ener- <laughs> Should have gotten you some coffee before this. Would have made this recording interesting. I only complained I was tired how many times before we started recording? I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking straight. So, um, I picked this up. Uh, in a Japanese bookstore. Last time I was at a Japanese bookstore. Uh, gotta love Japan Towns, people. Um, and it's called Freren Beyond Journey's End. And it's the first book, and we actually did just receive the, I did just receive the second book. It's just coming out. So it's a really new series. And we thought we'd do one of these episodes on it because I read it, and I really thought Nick Knack would enjoy it, so I lent it to you. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this, uh, this book so far. I'm, I'm really excited to read the second book. I just found the entire thing heartwarming, very, a very different take. Like, I don't want to say it's Ishike, because it's not Ishike. It's definitely not, but it's, it's very it, different from any other high fantasy. Yeah, it's, it's a really good slice of life fantasy, I think. Yeah, so I'll, I'll read the back real quick, just so, um, so spoilers abound from here on out, basically, but Elf Mage Freren and her courageous fellow adventurers have defeated the Demon King and brought peace to the land. But Freren will long outlive the rest of her former party. How will she come to understand what life means to the people around here? Decades after their victory, the funeral of one of her friends confronts Freren with her own near immortality. She sets out to fulfill the last wishes of her comrades and finds herself beginning a new adventure. So right from the start, right, we're already starting from a place where the hero's party has already defeated the greatest evil and saved the world, right? Like, her party was her, a dwarf... Uh, a priest and the great hero, you know, and she's an elf, and obviously elves live forever in high fantasy. Well, not forever, but elves have a really fucking long time. Yeah, lifespans measured in the hundreds of years to the thousands of years, while humans basically have a, about a century in them, and dwarves about three to seven hundred, depending on the series, approximately. Very close to what Tolkien defines for like ages. Um, and so the story starts out, obviously, we're following Freren, the elf, and it's it's kind of... I almost thought it was sad the first time I read it, because she doesn't... She comes back, right? And she comes back for a funeral. And for her, it feels like no time has passed. Like, she genuinely feels like it's only been a few days or a year or two, but her friends have grown old. One One has died now, and she never came back to visit him like she never spent more time with him i think it's an interesting twist on the uh the idea of coming to terms with your own mortality coming to terms with one's immortality yeah i mean i think i've i've said this to other people before but i think being immortal i i would never want to be immortal right unless those around me were also immortal because i can't imagine getting close to people and then having to watch them die time after time after time um, and that's a common... There, sometimes this plays out in stories where it's the, the evil character is the one who's immortal and they've been twisted They've been twisted by having to watch their friends die time after time after time. Sometimes, I think I've read a story, right, for example, where the, where the, the villain was someone who wanted to find a way to get rid of immortality, right? Um, or, or kill people off easily because they didn't want to live forever. And I think it's actually quite a refreshing take on her coming to terms with her own immortality that she's not, it's not depressive, but it's almost like she wants to be better, you know? Like she, she takes it not in a, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm living while my friends are dying, but you know, my friends always told me that I should engage more with the world and be more aware of what was happening. So why don't I do that? You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really adorable. Yeah, it provide it makes for some interesting storytelling moments, like both when they're more introspective about um, death, and when they're more. Uh, it deals with a lot of themes of the passage of time too. Like, well, my one of my favorite moments is like one of the action action scenes where she goes and she deals with a sealed demon that used incredibly powerful killing magic. Uh, that caused a lot of problems for the party and the people around uh, the village that she was uh, she was at. She comes like, yeah, no. We've developed since then. That magic is standard, and everyone knows how to defend against it. 
Yeah, yeah, because like they they never defeated the demon, but they sealed it, and yeah. so she came back on the eve of it of its seal failing to deal with it finally. You know, now that they've developed ways around it, I think my favorite part was where she found the overgrown statue of her friend, the adventurer, who became the king, and and kind of uncovered it and cleaned it off and planted a field of flowers that she thought he would well, have enjoyed. I, she didn't just plant a field of flowers; she went and found an extinct variant of the flower. <laughs> A one that he'd mentioned to her yeah. once upon a time, yeah. And I thought that that was really adorable because, it, it like, the imagery of it, right? Like, she journeyed with this person. She has this anecdote about him being an absolute ass to the person who was sculpting the statue and just being super high maintenance. And everyone else is like, this This is the great king of old. Like, we, <laughs> we worship at his feet. And she's just like, he pissed off this sculptor so fucking much. He's the great king of hole. That man was an asshole. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's just, it's a really sweet story, too. So Because it starts with the death of the king, the warrior. And then she's kind of set on her path by the priest, who's growing older um, and realizes he doesn't have a lot of time, but he still wants her to understand and to, to kind of take her life more in her own hands, you know? And so he enlists the dwarf to help him, you know, make sure that she sets off on her path. That's, that's fucking adorable, you know? Ah, they're such good friends. And I, th I, think, I think the most heart-wrenching moment was when she's, she's at the funeral and she starts crying. And she's like, I didn't... Because at the first funeral, right, that everyone's calling her heartless. They're calling her cold-hearted and because she can't, she's not crying and she has no expression on her face. And then later you just see her like tears streaming down her face because she has lost something. She just didn't understand what she'd lost mm -hmm. until it was already gone. Well, because she went on, like, she went on a little trip and came back and the guy was already close to death. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking heartrending. This, this, this manga is so good. It's so good. It just... I highly recommend it. It's a pretty new uh, manga, too, to my understanding. Yeah, like I said, book volume two literally came out on the 27th of January in English. So... This was very new, and I, it's, I think it's coming out about once, uh, once every four or five weeks an English volume is coming out, at least up until volume six. Yeah, I don't know how fast it's coming out in Japan, but clearly yeah. it's coming out pretty fast, because I swear I just heard about this... Like, as brand new, not that long ago. Yeah, one through six will be out by July. However, only one and two are out, well, as of us filming this. But I, I'm probably going to have three on pre-order soon, so we'll definitely be reading them as they come out. And if the story stays really, really good, you're definitely going to be seeing more of these. At the very <laughs> least, you'll see volume two. Yep, yep. But with that being said, that is two big recommendations. From possibly the two most disagreeing members when it comes to like high fantasy eh, we're not that disagreeing just on some of the bigger ones i think we disagree on like some of the core ones though and it's about like major story elements so you know varied opinions like comment subscribe we'll see you next time mm -hmm.